Today, I'd like to introduce you to some ladies, some ladies with big responsibilities. They carry the weight of their whole nation on their shoulders. Stick around and I'll introduce you to them. I'm sure you've all heard of Britannia, a warrior woman carrying a trident and a shield as seen here on the Armada Memorial in Plymouth, England. She dates back to the second century when she appeared on coins of the Roman Empire's province of Britannia. After Roman rule ended in the fifth century, the name stuck and it continues to be used today to refer to Great Britain. Britannia has been depicted on a countless number of stamps of Great Britain and its colonies, notably the first issues of the Cape of Good Hope as well as Trinidad, Barbados, and many others. Britannia also features on a Great Britain set that many collectors consider one of the most beautiful sets, the so-called seahorses. Now, what you may not be aware of is that Britannia had a younger sister. Her name is Melita, named after Malta's ancient capital of Melita. That sisterly relationship between the two can be seen on this stamp from Malta showing Britannia consoling and protecting her little sister. And Melita has appeared on a few other issues of Malta such as this one and this one. Now what if I told you that Britannia had another little sister? at least according to her representation in some cartoons published in Punch magazine. Hibernia is the personification of Ireland. And though Hibernia has appeared on coins over the years, she has yet to appear on a postage stamp of Ireland. And that's uh, mainly due to political reasons. And her closest philatelic connection is being the center statue of the three that are atop the general post office building. So now we know Britannia had two younger sisters, but did you also know she has a daughter? Now no one knows who the father is, but the daughter grew up to be another national personification. Her name is Zealandia and she personifies the nation of New Zealand. And while she's rarely referenced in the country today, in the earlier part of the 20th century, she could be seen everywhere. She is on New Zealand's coat of arms. She is the female figure on the left, as can be seen on this revenue stamp. And before that, she was depicted on this 1901 issue. And though Scott Catalog identifies the figure as commerce, if you look at the statue of Zealandia on the Fallen Soldiers Memorial in Palmerston, New Zealand, and compare it to the image on the stamp, I think it's apparent who it really is. Next, let's look at Italia, the personification of Italy. As seen on this stamp, Italia is always shown wearing what's called a mural crown. And that is a crown which has the design of the city walls and the towers and turrets. And Italia appeared on a long definitive series that was issued between the years 1953 and 1972. And then she also appeared on this issue from 1949 in which she appears behind a sprouting oak stump which symbolizes the revitalization of the country after the war. Now you'll notice there's kind of a thing going on, a pattern, where the names of these ladies end with the letters IA. We have Britannia, Zealandia, Hibernia, Italia, and that's because they all come from the, the old uh, Roman Latin names uh, for these countries. And another one of these countries was called Germania. 
And the personification of this country is this lady, Germania. And also, as is usual with the other countries, she is depicted wearing armor and holding a sword, as seen here, on the Niedervault monument. And she was also created back in the times of the Holy Roman Empire. Germania first appears on a German postage stamp in 1900 in a set of 10 definitives. And she continued to appear on these definitives with really no change in the design, just minor changes to the background of the stamp. She is also shown on this set where Germania is shown welcoming the Sarland back into the family. One more Latin lady and her name is Helvetia or Helvetia, depending on how you like to pronounce your Latin. The Swiss Federation was formed in 1848 and in order to place in the minds of the people a, a sense of unity, you know, rather than them still being all their individual cantons that are making up this uh, confederation, they wanted to be seen as a, uh, as a united nation. And thus Helvetia was uh, created to represent the entire confederation. Helvetia first appeared on coins in 1850 and she made her first appearance on stamps in 1854. She's appeared quite a few times since in various poses. And in this stamp, she can be seen standing in front of the mountain peak known as the Jungfrau or the Maiden. And I'll be honest with you, every time I came across that uh, stamp listing in Scott's catalog and saw the Jungfrau, I thought that was referring to the young lady in the foreground. But no, Jungfrau is the name of the mountain. And of course, the young lady is actually Helvetia herself. The year 2023 marks the 175th anniversary of the Confederation of the Swiss States into one nation. And I've read that to mark the anniversary, Swiss Post is going to issue another Helvetia stamp. But try as I might, I was not able to find an advance image of that stamp. Now we come to someone who breaks that Latin naming mode, and she is a very popular mademoiselle named Marianne. And she, of course, represents the Republic of France. Springing up out of the French Revolution, Marianne represented the spirit of the people and of the New Republic. And she is always, or almost always, depicted wearing this Smurf cap. Actually, it's a Liberty cap, or more formally, a Phrygian cap. Marianne made her first appearance on postage stamps in 1944, and she appeared in several different series over the next couple of years. And as far as I've been able to find, she's appeared on one commemorative stamp, this one showing Marianne on horseback, leading her people to liberation. One interesting aspect of Marianne is that her depiction or her countenance is not fixed. It's not a set uh, face. And every time there's been a new artist to create a new Marianne stamp, that artist has recreated her in an image of their own liking. And that can be seen clearly here as I show you some of the various Marianne stamps that have been issued throughout the years. Now, the next lady is a mystery to me. I came across this set from Liberia and the Scott catalog captions the stamp image, quote, Liberia. So evidently the lady in the stamp design is the personification of Liberia. But as much time as I spent Googling and trying to find out information about this lady, there was nothing to be found. So if anybody can tell me anything about this lady who is the personification of Liberia, 
please let me know. Now, other than Liberia, all of these ladies have been either European countries or uh, belonging to uh, you know, the British Commonwealth. There are other countries in, in Central America and South America and the Caribbean who have uh, national personifications also, but I was unable to find any stamps that depict them. So here again, if you know of any stamps that depict the personification of countries other than what I've already mentioned, please let me know in the comments below. Now there is one more country that I need to mention, and that is of course the United States of America. Now strictly speaking, and I'm the one who's being strict here, <laughs> the U.S. has no stamps that show the personification of the country. And some of you will say, that's not true. The Statue of Liberty appears on stamps. But to me, that's not the personification of this country. In fact, she's not even a personification because she never appears as anything other than a statue. <laughs> and then there's her name, the Statue of Liberty. She's the personification of just a principle, one of the founding principles of this country. So then you might say, well, what about Uncle Sam? Well, to me, Uncle Sam is not the country, the people. Uncle Sam always represents the government. Like when you pay your taxes, you say, I got to give Uncle Sam his share or retired servicemen who collect a retirement check. They might joke that Uncle Sam pays him this week. Now, early in the 20th century, there was a distinct lady who was the personification of this country. And her name was Columbia. And you'll notice that we have the Latin IA ending because Columbia was named after, of course, Christopher Columbus. And the name Columbia goes back at least to colonial times when the, when the British in Great Britain referred to the New World colonies and to the New World itself as Columbia. And that also manifested itself in uh, Washington, D.C., District of Columbia. You have Columbia, South Carolina. You have the Columbia River. And like Zealandia in the early 20th century, Columbia could also be found much more frequently than she is today. And that's a shame. As you can see on my stamp mock-up on the thumbnail for this episode, I think Columbia makes a nifty design for a U.S. postage stamp. So I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to the ladies who make up the personification of nations. If you liked it, please hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon and the thumbs up and, you know, spread the word. And come and join me on my new stamp forum called TED Talk Stamps, the forum. I have a link for it in the description below. I'd love to you know, chat with you there and, and you're free to post pictures of your own stamp collections and let's share our collections with each other. So until next time, this is Ted the Talking Stamp Collector wishing you all happy stamping.